Availability Virtual Recovery Assistant. Doubletake Availability can use a method called Virtual Recovery Assistant to protect multiple production servers, either physical or virtual, by replicating directly to a pre-provisioned virtual machine on either ESX or Hyper-V. ESX requires the use of a virtual recovery assistant guest virtual machine running Windows and Doubletake availability. The image on the screen shows three servers protected by VRA. The VRA guest auto provisions replica virtual machines on the ESX farm, then connects directly to the VM disks. Doubletake availability then replicates data from the production servers directly to the replica VMDK files. When a failure occurs to a production server, we can fail over to the replica virtual machine. The virtual recovery assistant will simply inject VMware drivers, will disconnect from the VMDK files and will start up the replica virtual machine. I have a virtual machine running Exchange 2010. I have already installed Doubletake availability. It's a quick demonstration to verify Exchange functionality by just quickly sending an email to the administrator account. Okay, you can see the email has come through. I'll just take a look at our virtual recovery assistant, which is a Windows 2008 R2 server running on ESX. I can see currently I've just one hard disk, which is the C drive of the VRA appliance. To configure protection, I'll start in the double take console. If I select manage servers, I can see both my virtual recovery assistant and production server both have double take installed. I can use the get started wizard, select double take availability, select that I wish to protect an entire server using a Hyper-V or ESX virtual machine. Select this production server that I wish to protect, which is called EX2010, provide some credentials. Double take analyzes the production server, and in this case, it is warning us that the SAN policy of the production server is not set to online. The SAN policy being set to anything other than online could actually cause a delay in the failover process while an administrator would need to manually turn the disk online. It is possible to change the SAN policy using the disk part utility. Simply set the SAN policy to be online as shown on the screen. Return to the double take console, we can simply acknowledge that message. We can now choose which volumes to protect. We can also add folder locations to exclude if we wish. Excluded folders will not be replicated to the replica virtual machine. A good example could be the temp folder. The next stage is to choose a target server. The target server is actually the virtual recovery assistant virtual machine. We then need to choose a target ESX server where we will host the replica virtual machine. It is possible to specify a virtual center server which will allow us to browse the data center or in this case we can just specify the ESX server name or IP address, the username and the password with credentials to access the ESX server. Doubletake will query the ESX server and return information such as data stores, number of CPUs and, and the amount of RAM available. We can now choose the data store we would like to host the replica virtual machine. It is also possible to use pre-existing virtual disks if we had maybe pre-populated the VMDK files with a subset of the data from our production server. We can actually save on replication. Now choose a replica virtual machine name. We can specify the number of CPUs and the amount of RAM that we wish to give to the replica virtual machine. We can also provide a uh, network mapping. So our local area connection on our production server can be mapped to a specific network on the ESX host. 
It is also possible in double take 5.22 to fail over to a remote subnet. So we can actually now specify a alternate IP address to apply to the replica virtual machine on failover. In this scenario, I'm actually failing over to a same subnet, so I'll skip that section. We can also in double take 5.22 change the size of our replica virtual disks. We can either make them smaller than the production server or larger. We can also change the virtual disk type from being a fixed size or a dynamically expanding size. The dynamically expanding disk takes use of VMware's thin provisioning technology. We can now set some protection options, whether we wish to compress the data between the source server and the target server, or whether we wish to route through a particular network interface, or whether we wish to limit the bandwidth. We can also configure automatic failover if we wish, and I'm going to uh, demonstrate this um, by enabling automatic failover with a fail failure detection time of 25 seconds. Finally, we're giving a protection summary. We can quickly review and when we're happy, hit the finish button and protection will be started. So double take is going to communicate with the VRA, Virtual Recovery Appliance, which in turn is going to talk to the ESX server um, to create a new replica virtual machine. We can actually see the replica virtual machine in the VMware management console. Notice the type of disk is thin provisioned and the size of the disk is as we specified earlier. We can monitor the protection job. We can see that the virtual disks are being attached to the virtual recovery assistant. They're being initialized. They will be formatted and they will be presented as a mount point in the virtual recovery assistant. We can use the VMware client to look at the virtual recovery assistant and we can see that additional disks have been added. If we look at the uh, disk file path for the disks, it is actually the same disk that has been added to the replica virtual machine. So we can have a look at the virtual recovery appliance and see what's happening inside Windows. If I browse for the uh, double take folder on the C drive, I can see a folder called mount there which contains mount points pointing to the replica virtual machines VMDK files. Double take is currently mirroring data from the production exchange 2010 server directly into these VMDK files. I'll just show a quick demonstration of the double take replication engine in action if I connect to the mount point of the replica virtual machine and then connect to the exchange 2010 server. Um, I will connect to the E dollar sign share, quickly create a new folder. The new folder is immediately created inside the mount point. I'll quickly create a new text file in the same folder and I'll edit the text file just to change the content. I will save my file. Then I will browse the mount point on the virtual recovery appliance and I can see the text file with the content that I'd changed. All we need to do now is wait for the double take mirror to complete and the server will be protected. Okay, we're back in the double take console. We can see the exchange 2010 job has been completed and I've created a second job for a SQL server using the same VRA. One of the cool features about VRA is the ability to do a test failover. So hit the failover button and you can choose a live failover or a test failover. I'm just going to do a demonstration of the test failover. A test failover will simply start up the replica virtual machine but will not connect it to the network. It also will not affect the production server. We can monitor the test failover in process using both the double take console and the ESX console. We, in the double take console, we can see that we are disconnecting from double take. We will disconnect from the replica virtual machines disks. And eventually we will see the replica virtual machine be turned on.
there we go we can see the replica virtual machine has been turned on we can open the console we can see it's a crash consistent um, startup and we can actually watch the replica virtual machine start up If we look at the properties of the virtual machine, we can inspect the network adapter. We can see that the, the network adapter is not connected. It would be easy to connect it to a test network if we wish to do a test failover for multiple servers that need to communicate with each other. For now, I'm going to select the undo failover button. This is essentially going to shut down the replica virtual machine and will re-establish protection from the source exchange server. So the undo failover process is going to turn off the replica virtual machine, it's going to reattach the VMDK files to the VRA appliance and will re-establish double take protection. Okay, we're back in the double take console and protection has been re-established. This time I'm going to do a real failover. I did configure automatic failover, so this time I'm just going to turn off the exchange server. We can see the exchange server turn off and we can now examine the double take console to watch the failover automatically take place. Failure detection was configured for 25 seconds. Eventually we can see that source information is unavailable and that the automated failover process begins. Similar to when we did the test failover, the virtual recovery appliance is going to inject VMware drivers into the replica image. It's going to disconnect itself from the VMDK disk and it's going to start up the replica virtual machine. Okay, we can now see the replica virtual machine has been turned on. So I can connect to the VMware console. We now just need to wait for Windows to boot up and for all of the services for Exchange to start on the replica virtual machine. It's worth pointing out that the VRA injects VMware drivers so that the virtual machine can actually boot. You may have been protecting a physical server and you go into a virtual, so we need to install drivers. However, it does not install VMware tools. It's a good idea to, at some point in the future, to go into the virtual machine and install the latest version of VMware tools. Okay, we're ready to test Exchange 2010. I'm just going to close down my previous uh, web access window um, from when it was connected to the last server. I'm going to open up Internet Explorer and again just connect to the set, exactly the same URL. I'm going to provide credentials, just the administrator account, uh, sign in, and I can see my emails uh, from before. I can do a, another test email to the administrator account. We can see the test email arrive in the administrator's mailbox um, and that verifies exchange functionality so the failover has been successful.